Welcome back to video number two of our five part video series getting this Great Lakes biplane that sat for a few years back airworthy, back flying again. In this episode, we're doing a fabric repair. We're doing the airframe inspection. We're rigging the airplane. We're doing the fuel system. We're basically getting everything else that we didn't finish on the last video done for this one. Please like, comment, subscribe. We love the support. Thank you, everyone. This airplane's got a pretty cool future ahead of it. So why not be a part of it from the beginning? <laughs> All right, today we are starting under the plane. This area of the belly is very oil soaked, so we're probably just gonna do one big patch rather than just do individual tapes. We do not have heat in this hangar, so we did have to build a little room to get the temperature correct for this fabric repair. After cleaning the belly and making a plan, Cliff made a patch, glued, tightened it, and the mini coats of sealer and silver UV protectant began. This is the Randolph system, and the color of the fuselage is Diana Cream. An interesting tidbit, it is actually painted the inverse color scheme of Colp Halen's Great Lakes. This was also the first time we have not used a spray gun when painting. It would have been impossible for us to do in this hangar and also challenging what with the repair being on the belly. Overall, we were very impressed with how well the hand painting turned out and we are kind of excited to do it for a more authentic look on the triplane in the future. We are ready to continue on with the inspection of the actual airframe. So, so far, the tail is done, cockpit is done, landing gear is done. On to the wings. So, main thing with the wings in this particular airplane is gas tank is in the top center section. So we have the fuel gauge, all the fuel lines. We have the flying wires, we have the struts, we have the pedostatic tube, we have the ailerons on the bottom wing, and that's pretty much about it. So we'll grab the checklist, and uh, basically what we're gonna be doing is checking and make sure all the hardware is tight. We're gonna lubricate the ailerons, we're gonna look inside the inspection covers. We'll grab the creeper, grab a flashlight, grab some lubrication, and Let's get these done. We're skipping the flying wires for now. All the ends and stuff. We are going to check the rigging on it. It should be dialed in, but just want to do it a little bit better and um, just check the numbers, make sure everything's good. Top of the wing is done, bottom of the wing is done, struts are done, pedostatic done, top and lower, bottom and lower. We're gonna move all the tools over to the left side and let's get the left side done. We had to take the side panel off one, just for the annual, and two, we wanted to do all the brake reservoirs, just thoroughly inspect everything. That side panel is very annoying to get off. You can get to everything from inside the front cockpit, but you bent over and everything. So for inspection parts, it's been a while. Brakes are done, no leaks, everything in here is good. So we finally get to put it back on. Done a lot of stuff through this hole. So I'm just gonna look for tools and any loose objects and stuff like that. It's very annoying to get off with two people. Let's try to put it back on with just one. 
quick project. The side panels where it screws in, it was originally like, had like a nut on the back and then it had like sheet metal screws that were worn out and stuff. So made easy work of it. We put floating nut plates on the back. We riveted them all in. We used our trusty tool, Janie's favorite tool for, we use them on the wing tips. It's done. So now we could take the side panels off and take these off very easy every annual brakes and everything are right there. Also, since we have everything off, we're gonna put some weather stripping on the front and the back so that the oil that comes off of the engine, hopefully we don't want it to get back and start wearing away where that fabric repair was. That's it. Fuel gauge. The old one was cracked around the bottom and stuff. You might see a hose clamp, some of the pictures. That was just so we could put fuel in it to run it. Old fuel gauge from the 70s, from Great Lakes, from the wing. This one when it was built, it's a factory tank. Pretty cool that you're able to call up Waco, who now owns Great Lakes, and it is the same exact fuel gauge. Comes with the Curtis valve in. About 500 bucks, so it's not cheap. We've been cradling this thing like no other. You gotta get your own O-ring though. $500 fuel gauge. We had to wait a week to get an O-ring from California Aircraft Spruce before we can put this thing in. So get your O-ring or Waco, just give us an O-ring. We're gonna boroscope the tank. We will uh, lube it all up, put it in. We're gonna keep it on the looser side of anything and uh, we don't wanna tighten it too much and you get to see our nice wrench because everyone needs an inch and five eighths wrench. The fuel tank looked extremely clean, as you can see. I will say it was very cool checking the inside of the tank, and we were happy to see how well the Pro Seal held up over the years. We wanted to calibrate the fuel gauge to see exactly where the indications would be on the ground versus tail up and level flight. Before fueling up, however, Cliff finished the inspection on the fuel system with the gas glader cleaning and replacing the Curtis valve on the bottom. So we're putting five gallons in. We're gonna put the tail on the ground, take note of where it is on the fuel gauge. Put the tail up in the air to level flight and see where it is. We repeated this process every five gallons until the tank was full. So if you see that in the air or on the ground, land. It's time to do the rigging. So this airplane was already rigged. We're going by the manual on how to rig it. We're doing the tail right now. Just leveled the airplane exactly. Tail is up, so it's basically how it would be when it's flying. We have basically our little piece of angle iron hooked a fish scale on, and we'll pull to one inch deflection. And through our handy dandy formula, we'll see how much pounds of pull will be on the fish scale to one inch of travel for this amount of tension that's supposed to be on that. This was my first time rigging an airplane with flying wires. It is a lot different than rigging a wing with just simple wing struts. The wires all work off of one another, and of course there are 14 on just the outer wings alone, which makes for a lot of tweaking. Next video, we are going to be working on the firewall Ford. We will be doing everything from changing the oil, replacing the magnetos and timing them, to having the entire intake system apart. We will be uploading the third video next week. See you then.